Hello and welcome to the second part of PHP tutorials for making websites. In this tutorial we're going to go through creating databases and tables for the hosting that we used in the tutorial 1 which was 000webhost.com which is free. So let's go ahead. So the first step is obviously login to cPanel. Okay, members area, email. Okay. Now, you select your domain and you go go CP, C panel. Okay. Then you go to MySQL. Now you enter um, basically details for new database. I'm gonna use this for tutorial. Okay. Create database. Okay. All good. These are our details for connecting to the database from PHP. I actually recommend you write them down somewhere or save them to Notepad or something. Uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to just keep them in separate tab. So let's go back. Now to go back to your website cPanel, you just select your domain, click go. Okay. Now you log in through PHP My Admin, then press Enter PHP my admin, and we're in your dot uh, in the database table in da database now. Sorry, got mixed up. So as you can see, we're given a warning: there's no table found because obviously we just create the database. <clears throat> if you have tables from some other websites, or if you're just ex exporting or like moving your website across to different hosting, you go here, import, and import your tables and it's gonna automatically generate all the required fields but for this, this tutorial we'll be using new so let's create a new table called users number of fields let's make it six why not and go <coughs> now generally for every table like users I don't know list of something messages whatever you should have ID first and it should be unique which is going to be used for referencing users and so on I'm going to explain everything later so ID let's make int uh, 12 yeah let's make primary index and extra auto increment so this basically says whenever a new row or record is added make this field go up by one so one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So every user that registers has gonna have his ID higher than the one previous before him. I'll show you later on as well. Right now we're just basically creating table. The rest doesn't matter. So the second thing is email, obviously. Var chart two point five. This basically says that like we cannot know how long user's email is, it could be like 60 characters, could be 15, could be 6 characters, you know, there's different types of emails, so let's use automatic varchar, 255, and uh, let's make index, index, password. Now, for this tutorial I'll be using again automatic length, because I don't know what kind of encryption you're using, because different encryption will have different um, length of hash given so I'm gonna use automatic when you decide on which encryption method you want to use you should generally go back to this uh, table I'll change this to character character and set this to length of your hash given but for this tour I'll be using Vartor for automatic now Let's log IP as well. I like to log IPs of users who register so that I know which IP address was used to register this specific user. So as I explained in previous tutorial, you have a um, basically IP, IP denial list, I think it's called. So if, if you notice some user is doing some dodgy stuff or something they shouldn't do on your website, you can always log in into my PHP admin look up their IP address and just add it to the list of banned IPs addre IP addresses so yeah uh, reg 
I like to keep record when the user was signed up. So, timestamp, uh, default, current timestamp. So this basically says when the new record is created, the default value value should be current time, and the time will be in the format of current year, current month, current day. Then there's going to be space. Then it's going to say hour, month, uh, minute, second, and I think millisecond as well. I'm not sure about that, but it could be. Anyway, so we're done. Let's click save. Okay, we have table created. As you can see, it's in the list now. You can have many as many tables as you want. Now, yeah, I just want to mention something as well about MySQL. There's actually three ways to create a table or manage it. Uh, first way is what we just did using PHP My Admin, which which is supported by most of hosting hosting companies. Uh, second way is using just PHP. So if you're good at SQL, you can just use PHP to create new tables, delete them, change them, alterate them, whatever, empty them. Everything's possible with PHP for MySQL. And the third way, which is not possible for this hosting, unfortunately, is using external, like, like for FTP or using client. This same thing, except we're using MySQL client. I'm using Haiti SQL. Uh, this is my different hosting, which allows to use this method. Let me just show you. Okay. As you can see, from my PC, I'm straight logged in into my database. I can right-click, create new, table, or I can empty it, empty table, drop, edit, whatever. Now, the reason why this is not allowed for 000webhost.com is because you have free account and this hosting does not like for security reasons they do not allow you to make external connections to your mysql database they do however say that if you upgrade uh, for like five dollars a month you'll be able to make external connections so yeah just keep that in mind and um, let's actually test out our sql table mysql table sorry okay. Connect, public HTML, right click, create new file, test.php, right click, view edit. Now, for editing our PHP or CSS files, I usually prefer to using Notepad++ because it's really lightweight, uh, lightweight software, it doesn't put load on your PC or computer, laptop, whatever, and it's free as well. So, let's go ahead. Um, it doesn't matter if you do not understand all of these lines I'm going to type, because I'm going to explain them in the next tutorial, actually, because this tutorial is purely just for table creation. So, for now, you can just copy whatever I type. Oh, yeah, also, Notepad++ has a syntax highlighting. So, if I, as I open bracket, it's, it, see, it tells me, so the first parameter, like the parameter that goes, is host, then username, password, and database name, then port and the socket. But these are not used for this tutorial. So let's go ahead get our host. So the details that you recorded or kept. First host. Okay, let's copy. This should be put in double quote or single quote at least. Then goes user. Again, double quote, comma. Then goes password. Okay. Comma. And database name. Okay. Make sure these all are right, because if one of them is wrong, this is not gonna work. Um yeah, or invite. So we just created a connection. Well, it's not actually technically connected yet, but we have link to the database. Actually, I'm going to explain what this means. So this basically says connect to 
connect to basically this hosting, so place, which contains this database, which has username this, and his password must be this. If it's all good, there's not going to be a single error. If some some if one of these four things is wrong or not match with each other, you're going to get error. As you can see, error is going to say, like, I don't know what it's going to say, but it's just going to print error of this link. Anyway. Um, forgot link. Uh, actually forgot the structure. Um, email, password, IP, reg. Yeah. Okay. So let's just create fake values. Um, email is. Basically, I'm gonna for the test purposes, for testing purposes, I'm gonna be using um, get variables, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, uh, to just test the connection. Literally, I'm not gonna insert any real email, real password, real IP. I'm just gonna test it if the connection works. So let's go ahead. That should be fine, I think. Seems fine. So basically, we're saying insert into a user table. So this into the field email, password, and IP. So it's just saying skip this, skip this, just use this, this, and this, and insert values which are email, so input, pass, which is also input, and IP, which is also input. So that's all it's literally saying. So I'll go back to FileZilla or another FTP client. Click yes. It's basically saying like FileZilla has detected that the file was changed, which we just did. Uh, it's asking, do you want to replace it on the host? Say yes. Okay, it's uploaded and it's live. So now we actually need to get our domain. test.php now we need to put variables in which are email equals I'm not sure if it's gonna actually work because this has full stops in it could be problematic then pass is test and IP is no IP. Let's see. I think it's gonna go wrong. Well, nothing was printed, so let's see. Oh, yeah, it did actually work. So, as you can see, the new record was added. So, email, password, no IP, date frag. Uh, just to note though, as you can see, the, chain, the, the time is different. Right now it's 1.41 pm. Here it says 8 in the morning. This is because this is a host based in USA, I think. So the time zone is off by, what, five, six hours or something? I don't know, I'm not good at maths. Uh, but I'm going to show you later on how to fix this. We can actually test another one. Another insert. As you can see, ID is unique. One, two. If I press again, it's going to be three this time as you can see unique so this is going to be used to reference all your users so yeah that's it for this tutorial we have successfully set up the host the database the table so I'll see you next time